All right, Evan Marinovsky, John Zanis, Bruins, Lightning game one. And the story of the game was clearly Yaroslav Halak in this one, Evan. And he was, he was good. I mean, look, he still let in a soft-ish goal through a screen, maybe through McAvoy. It, you know, it, it wasn't terrific, but it's not, the, it's not what he let in. It's what he, what he stopped, particularly in the second period where uh, when the Bruins took a 2 nothing lead and Tampa just – flipped the switch and just came at him with everything they had. And he turned it all away and Bruins went into the intermission there uh, up to nothing. And that was, I mean, that was something he really kept him in the game. So your thoughts on, on him tonight and just how he's been since he took over for Tuca. I mean, that's the crazy story is that he's four and since taking over for Rask. Uh, and on top of that, I mean, you know, I thought his biggest test was going to be game one against the lightning. I thought that, you know, the Hurricanes, it was all cute. It was all fun that he was doing all these big things and winning all these games. But the real test was Tampa. That was going to be the test the entire time. Um, And to to rattle off a 35-save performance against that Tampa team, to have 18 saves, as you mentioned, that second period, I mean, my God. You know, I mean, the fact that he came up as big as he did. And they weren't all perimeter shots. You know, the Bruins did a solid job, a solid enough job of keeping them to the perimeter. But still, there were a lot of shots from in tight. There were a lot of uh, big saves he made right in high danger chances. Uh, and he turned them all away. Uh, yeah. And there were a lot of shots from the point that went through traffic that he made saves on. I was reminded by people on Twitter that the first goal went off McAvoy uh, or it skimmed him. It was, did not go right in. I thought it went just no, right it, in. It, it, you could see it. It nicked a pad. Um, it, it nicked McAvoy and changed direction. So it looked softer than it was because it wasn't a full screen. But at the end of the day, you're right. That was a deflection. So that's hard to fault Halak for it. It looked, it looked bad at first. Yeah, and I just – I think overall, you know, it's, it's funny. Halak's games seem to have a common trend of great, you know, first 40 minutes. Then in the third period, there's always a little, little hiccup, little moment where you go, oh, my God, this might be too good to be true. And that right. almost happened in game one. You had, as you said, the one that went off McAvoy. You had the second goal that had eyes from the point. You have these plays, and you're like, you're, you're sitting there, and the Bruins missed an empty net three times in the final two minutes. It had all the ingredients to this is going to be a nice little choke job in game one, which is going to set the tone badly for the Bruins in the series. But instead, the story is uh, Yaroslav Halak has assumed the role of starter great. Now, again, it's, we're going to see how this sort of takes over, uh, to, to take shape. Uh, and the rest of the series, and how he handles these back-to-backs as well. And you're worried. You're really worried if Tampa gets rolling or Tampa gets out, you know, and because they have the firepower, they absolutely can do it. And that's the fear here is this should have been a series with two Vezina finalists, and, you you know, you check the boxes as even in terms of the goaltending matchup, but it's not. And you still have Vasilevsky, who is a Vezina finalist, reigning Vezina uh, winner. Um, you know, I think he's a finalist three years in a row. Tampa's got that solid, right? Uh, and, and the Bruins are, are starting a backup, and that's the reality. So you're almost waiting for, you know, for, 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 you know, for the other shoe to drop with Halak, for him to kind of turn back, into a, to turn back into a backup and, you know, lose you a game. I mean, you're afraid there's going to be that Halak game, the one where it's like we, you lost it because of this guy. And against Tampa, that's going to be hard. So right now – I, I, there's nothing to be upset about, but you are, that concern is always going to be there going forward. I don't know at what point you feel th- that he's got it locked down. I don't know if there's going to be that moment. I don't, right. because as we know from during the season, you know, he's great in, in, you know, taking half the games, not all the games. Um, he does go through stretches of right. rough patches as every goalie does, but he does uh, a lot. It seems to, for, you know, a couple games at a time, he, he has real troubles. Uh, I don't think it's going away. I don't. I think once, if they do get past Tampa, I think the, the ease, you know, people will be eased up a little bit. I think Halak will get more into a groove. But again, I think his biggest test is still yeah. Tampa. Uh, but I don't, I still, as you said, it's a great point you made. Are we ever going to feel completely, completely secure that there is not going to be a game where Halak uh, is the reason they lost? And if you remember last year, there weren't any real postseason games that I can remember that the sole reason the Bruins lost was because Tuka Rask was not uh, fa- uh, fan, some bottom. fans would tell you otherwise but that's yeah, okay. some fans would say game seven but i would like to disagree <laughs> with those people um but but it is true though to see sort of how halak uh kind of goes about the rest of this series i mean well, I, i'm worried can right he away, hold on to these types of performances i'm worried right away on that tuesday wednesday turn let's say he let's say he you're, you talk about 
playing half the games, playing 40% of the games, 30. He's done that, okay? But you're looking at a Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-back situation, which is freaking asinine, by the way. Why make this? You can do whatever you want. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Why do that? But that's a different story. But again, he goes out and gets shelled in game two, and he's going to get right back in there. And it's like, woo, you know? And again, why play the what-if game? There's no reason to believe that that's going to happen. But again, it's just that question mark scenario of he's a backup. He's not used to playing every day. Uh, every game, you know, being the guy that can give up seven goals one day and just come right back and, hey, I'm the starter, you know, questions are going to arise if that happens. So, again, he's a veteran. He's been through it before, so I'm sure mentally he can handle it. It's just that question mark that we're never going to really fully feel confident and, and, and comfortable that, 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 uh, that, you know, he's got it under control. And it's not, again, it's, we're not saying Halak is bad. I, my no. story is literally, he's great. My point is, he's he does good. not he's have solid. the track he's record yeah. that someone like Rask has, where you can solely rely on Rask showing up every game. We don't know what Yaroslav Halak is going to look like with these back-to-backs and with a full series against the Lightning. We really have no idea. And also, the scary part is the backup situation. Now, they, ironically enough, just re-signed Dan Vladar in the middle of the game, like just, yeah. you know, hey, here's a contract extension midway through the second period, or I think it was the first intermission. Um, right. I think it was a little planned, but whatever. Um, but there's not a lot to, you know, to back up Halak. If Halak plays bad, who are you putting in? A guy yeah. with no NHL experience or someone with like 17 career games? So that's another part of the reason why someone like Halak does, or a situation like this does scare us and a lot of people. You've got your finger on the pulse. What's Tuka Twitter saying right about now? Is it good riddance? I'm glad he's gone. Or is it, okay, I take it all back. I wish you would return. I hope everything's okay at home. Please come back. I think, I think you know, it's funny. I haven't seen a lot about Rask. Once the yeah. Greg Hill show piece came out that said yeah. it was a medical emergency, once people sort of wrapped their head around that, they were like, you know what? It makes sense why he left. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, there is a lot of Rask talk. There's not a lot of people saying, oh, he's done. I hate him. He's terrible. Blah, 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 blah. It's more just along the lines of, you know, Halak has been good. Halak's been solid. I'm saying you'd st- the, Tuka, the Tuka haters out there would still feel a lot better if he was here. Yes, of course. Yeah. Everyone would feel better if Rask yeah. was here. I, I, right. Rask is your starting goalie. He's your Vesna finalist. Yeah. Yes, of course you'd feel better if Rask is here. But Halak's doing a damn good job. Yeah. Okay, well, again, we'll see it. It's a, it's a win. It's a win against Tampa. It's weird. The Bruins are and were wire to wire the best team in hockey, but when you play Tampa, for some reason, you feel like you're the underdog. And I don't know if it's a Halak factor, but you just you see that team, and they, 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 they're scary, and the Bruins did a good job. We'll talk more about that as well. But uh, for now, it's uh, Halak, ride him or die, game two on Tuesday. So we'll see what happens. Evan Marinovsky, John Zanis, we'll have more. Get 20% off and free shipping using the code MAX20 at manscaped.com. Take your grooming game to the next level.